All right, so we're here at my cousin's shop. Uh, this is Brad, and we grew up together doing this stuff. When I talk about like uh, I grew up doing this stuff, uh, let me grab this picture real quick. This is the same Jeep. Too bad there's not a date stamp on it, but the same Jeep that's right over there. What year do you think this is? 90s. I don't know, your dad's in 90s. Half shorts, and it looks like Kid Rock in the background. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Do you notice? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that same Jeep. It's just evolved over the years. One, go! Which is funny because it's got the the little guy peeing on the the Chevy bow tie, and it's got a Chevy engine in it now. <laughs> the irony. So um, we've been doing this a long time. I say doing it. We grew up around it, and this began doing it. But how long have you had it now? I've had this rig for about eight years. Okay. And before that, you had the Bunny Jeep, the Cherokee, right? The old Energizer Bunny. Yeah. With an inch and a half roll cage inside on a scout frame. Mm -hmm. um, and you willed that for a long time. It was a river rig turned rock crawler. It, it actually started out as spare parts. It was threw together with spare parts and just for the river. Yeah. And then uh, he took it on the rocks, my dad did, and uh, it did really well. And the axles that are under this, I remember, you're, were under that Cherokee at one time, and you traded a at dirt bike. At the end. You traded a dirt bike for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. There at the end, I did. Because it had a, before that, it had it was a 44 and a 14 bolt. Okay. So then I traded for a 60 and a 70 H2. And they were already built with lockers yeah, and fully built. Yeah. But downside to the gearing that was in it was it was so low gear that the pinion is like that big around. Yeah, had seven teeth on the pinion, seven seventeens. Yeah. And what's in it now? With sixty and seventy eight. No, what what five thirteens. So five thirteens now. Detroit and then a full spool. Full spool. Um not RCVs, right? No. Chrome, uh, Chrome all Yukon. Thirty five spine? Yep. Okay. So this is one of the rigs that Wednesday, uh, two days, we're gonna go down and do some more um, kind of pre-running for the race. And uh, Brad's gonna bring this down and do some wheeling on the short courts with it. But it is still that same Jeep in the picture. Back to here is factory tub and factory frame. He's redone, so cage, you know, a bunch of tube work on the interior. Was it last year when you did the back half and that did the four-seater conversion? Uh, last summer? Uh, it was uh, July last year. Yeah. yeah. So we came in and cut all this back off because before the chassis ended about here. So we did all this, add seats for the boys, redid the fuel cell mounting. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, one of those evolutions. I mean, from, what's that, almost 30 years now? This thing has been rebuilt probably 15 times. Yeah. No lie. Trial and error stuff. And, uh, I mean, you come in back then, it was four linked, and there was, there was no four link calculators. So, when I got it from the old man uh, about eight years ago, we cut so many four link brackets off this thing. Well, it took us two weeks just to get it back to a clean. Your dad's brand. really good with all the suspensions and there's numbers and stuff now but it he was doing it before there was calculators out like he was one of the first. figuring it out yeah uh there's i mean grinding marks on here from welding up cracks on the frame you know uh of course you see all the bent skid plate pieces and all the raw crash um you're actually still running johnny joints in here right that haven't been rebuilt and <laughs> yeah uh I, well, because you're all this, all, a lot of these parts are going into a, a different chassis, uh, which the plan was to do that, but didn't want to be down that long. So he went ahead and did the back, redid the back half to get, you know, two more seats for the boys. Um, now I'll start building the chassis that eventually this will drop in, all these parts will drop into, probably with an LS. I'm going to keep it You keep, think you're going to keep that? Yeah, I'm on board, Charlie. Okay. You want to show the new fuel injection here? Sure. So, had a very, like, original... Very old school. ...projection. Like, analog Daddy. dials. Daddy. So, 
right before New Year's, put um, a Holly uh, fuel injection setup in it. I didn't even know it. I came out two weeks ago, a month ago, and uh, I was like, man, that's a... Why is there a Holly little dash in there? He goes, oh, I didn't tell you. I, I, I put, put a Holly sniper on it. I was like, oh, all right then. <laughs> but, I mean... It, you even look at some of the old school stuff on here, like moving the control box for the the winch under the hood, um, so it's protected and also get tap into for switches inside for the winch box and stuff. Uh, I mean, I think people still do this now, but a lot of times now people just leave it up front. And, and built into the winch. Well, and they're a solid state. Well, this is individual solenoids. Four solenoids. So these didn't hold up as well. But uh, I mean, it's still factory column to an orbital up here. It's not even orbital on the firewall, you know? Um, full hydro steering. But I mean, this is this is a home built rig that's just changed over the years and got updated. And it does well for what it is. ORI shocks on our four corners. You've had, what, talk about his dad trying different things. You've had how many different shock setups on this four that i can think of quite a few different variations started out with coil springs and shocks and then i went to coilovers and i went to a different set of coilovers not to be named but well <laughs> we, you had coil springs with a ford raptor rear shock on it Correct. so like a ford raptor rear remote reservoir shock that's what he had on the front of this at one time so i mean using parts he had yeah you just throw it together whatever works works and then everybody, uh, you know, in their group started running ORIs. They they found a, a liking for it and figured out how to tune them, adjust them, and rebuild them. And so they they swear by them. Um, I have nothing bad to say about them. It's a different type of voodoo. I, I'm, I don't know much about yet, but I know they love them. I wouldn't be afraid to try them, you know. Uh, they finished KOH this year, the Dinsel Brothers, didn't they? Saw that, yeah. And their uh, yeah. IFS buggy, yeah. IFS Jimmy's buggy. And, and, dude, those Jimson guys are one-off guys. Yeah. They will help you walk you through every step. They're just so user-friendly, right out of the box. I mean, I can't say enough about those guys. So, hashtag Jensen Brothers or I struts. No doubt. <laughs> um, is there any, any special little knickknacks you want to show on this? Uh, the only cool thing Ooh. would probably be the rear fan. That we're, you're, or I said we, you. I'm, I'm still uh, r and in that. But. What, yeah, tell them about that real quick. So it's just a rear fan for the boys in the summer. Like a transmission to the fan? And it's just a fan hooked to the ceiling on a variable speed controller. So I can turn it down, turn it up. And that's probably... Uh, you gotta have a backup camera because when you're strapped in, you can't see behind you. So we got full blown backup cameras uh, and seat heaters. Front and rear, right? Not in this one. In the race buggy, we do. So I hope um, you guys would see that on Wednesday, but it's it's not ready yet. Still waiting on shop parts. I mean, it's not like you're not bringing a you know, know. rear steer buggy. Well, come to the Tackett Creek Challenge and you'll see it for yourself yes. in action. I, I I think we should go and get footage of it and. Uh, I don't know. Help, help them do it. He's a two-time winner of the Tiger Peak Challenge. Is there anything else that is worth showing off? You think, like, like that you're like extremely just, proud of on it? I mean, just, just, the whole thing? just no trail rig. Yeah. <laughs> Sis, Which, Sissy Jeeps pretty pretty much speaks for herself. Yeah. It's funny he says trail rig. Like we we have discussions all the time in our group of. What's a trail rig? Well, I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of like the guys that do the drag and drive stuff. Like, oh, what's a what's a street car? You know, well, in my opinion, it's a it's anything that's street legal that you drive on the on the road. And some people are like, oh, what's a promo? That's not a street car. I'm like, if it's tagged and insured, it's a street car. I could totally tag and insure this one, but yeah. it's still got a VIN plate. It's still got the original VIN plate right here on the yeah. firewall. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking mall crawler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm just an open diff mall crawler. You know what I am? <laughs> Full hydraulic steering, high speed. Uh, it ain't fun. <laughs> But it's it, it's all open to interpretation and what you're comfortable with. And I mean, trail rig is it's kind of like race car. I don't. I mean, there's so broad terms on it. Um, but this is definitely like a I'd say a higher end trail rig. 
Maybe not the prettiest anymore, but man, she she tells some stories. Yeah, she works great. I mean, I, I remember one time I got grape uh, grape soda out of the ice chest of this out the river and got sick. And so I, I and that we were <laughs> nine years old or something when that happened. Their Jeep has been on the trails for thirty years. I'll never drink grape soda anymore because I got it out of this ice chest out of here and I got sick after it. Yeah, I must have been. That's Rusty's old Something about mixture. a zip and a double cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a... So what's your favorite part about it? One just, specific uh, part that you just really uh, like. It's sentimental value. That's fair. The fact that my dad built this when my uh, eldest boy is now five, six years old. Yeah. And it's still around, so... I actually won this at... Um, a limited off-road expo at Texas Motor Speedway down in Texas, and uh, Axel didn't have a small enough size to fit my stepdaughter, so uh, he sent me this one, and my girls weren't using it or anything, so I regifted it to him for his boys because this was getting built, and now his boys wear it now. I don't know, kind of. It still got three pedals in it. But um, now it's just a bigger brake pedal. Full blown manual brakes, no power brakes on this one. <laughs> you get the right ratio, and it feels like that. manual brakes, no booster or nothing. Um, you know, with uh, you run a residual pressure for the rear Two. or front and rear. Archer, you don't need to go outside, buddy. Uh, I don't know. I think it's cool when the sway bar is mounted on the axle instead of on the frame. That was, so it used to be on the frame when he redid the back that was added on there. And uh, we just added a second muffler onto it. So single muffler before came out and dumped out here. Well, he had a second one and we were, I show up one day and he's got some pipe and another muffler and he's like, tell me how this sounds. And then I just ramrodding it in there and we fire it up. I'm like, oh, that actually doesn't sound too bad. It's a little quieter, but still had some throat to it when you got on it. So now it's it's got a second muffler back here. Yeah. So there's this one and then one down there under the belly. <laughs> so that's a gated shifter and all the gates have been cut out. Mine. So you can go for so for like first or second whatever to reverse and back out of a you know a wheelie real quick. So this is why I was saying in the other buggy, um, the race buggy, they had to move some switches because they went from a. Uh, we actually put two muffers on there. I, I saw that that was. So the the race buggy they just went to this style and. They, there were some switches mounted by the old Olo shifter that didn't fit there anymore. So they built a custom uh, panel like up here with uh, is it your, the start and fuel. Start ignition fuel. Yeah, up up top now. That's what these three are. Which is real nice when you have a plasma table. You can be like, let's see if we can make something, you know, and you just draw it up, cut it out. Yeah. So this is Sissy Jeep. Uh, and it's still around, still kicking, and. I'm sure it, even when he gets the other rig built, uh, this will probably eventually get passed down to his boys. So don't be afraid to keep something around and keep working on it, keep modifying it, because eventually, you know, it gets from that picture, and in 30 years, you can have something like this too. <laughs>